If you're an investor watching this video, hopefully you'll avoid in the future all five of these things that we're going to talk about today. And I'm bringing on a special guest who if you don't know who this guy is and you buy and sell in Florida, then you need to look him up. Let's go! All right, I am so excited today. We've got Joe LaFleur. Joe and I are both multifamily brokers and we're both covered. He mostly covers Central Florida and comes up to North Florida and I do Central and North Florida and, and we send each other customers and, and we just, we actually have shared the same coach for a long time, but Joe LaFleur is known for his 100units.com website. The dude's a legend. Nobody, including me, gets more listings than Joe. Joe is an absolute monster lister and he's got a great great team and so he and i were talking the other day and we thought we should do a top five things that investors do that brokers hate joe welcome to the show brother awesome thanks bro i appreciate it thanks for that killer introduction <laughs> i mean I, it man I, i'm the face man everybody sees me they don't see nikki Tito, Sean, Johnny, yeah. get like there's there's a lot of other people doing a lot of work. Hundred <laughs> percent, man. Me look good. You, know, you said it. None of us are jack crap without our support, and I, I totally agree. All right, man. I want to jump into this in no particular order. What's the number one thing you hate that investors do? This would be on the buyer's front. So you're going, you're working hard to get a deal, competitive situation. They go all out, get the deal under contract. And then the buyer's like, oh man, you know, it's been three weeks doing my due diligence. You know, I need to, I need to retrade on the price. I need a big price reduction. You know, mm. Oh man, what happened? Like what, what's, you know, what did you find? Is there a sinkhole that nobody knew about? What, you know, what's the situation here? Oh, you know, this building, it was built in 1972. <laughs> He's just now finding this out. I just a total <laughs> shocker. I had no idea. Whatever, just who thought? I thought it was built yesterday. Yes. So retrading without any retrading merit whatsoever. Stuff that was blatantly obvious and stated to you before we went under contract. If yes. there's a real problem that's a surprise, that's one thing. But when you tell me the building is old, I mean, yeah. It's just as old a month ago. Exactly. I tell folks when something comes up during a due diligence, first of all, it has to be something that wasn't already stated, like as you said. But then if it wasn't already stated, it has to be significant enough to actually move the needle on your IRR or cash on cash. Otherwise, it's like you just look like a chunk. Yes. Yeah, so if you're if yeah. you're arguing about 10 grand, you should <laughs> never have put that deal under contract. Exactly. You don't know what the hell you're doing if that's going to make a difference. This is, we're just on the wrong planet. <laughs> yes. All right, man. What's your number two? Number two, this is one of my favorites, actually. We spend a lot of time on working on the seller side, listing deals. We get a lot of buyers coming in all the time, a lot of beauty pageants. Yep. Somebody wins, and then there's a whole lot of miscongenialities. Well, there's nothing like having miscongeniality come up, call you up, scream at you Ugh. about how come it's your fault they didn't get the deal, how you didn't tell that they should have told me. Right. You had an equal shot with everybody else. Somebody else decided that they wanted to step it up. They wanted a little more. Amen is, to that. This is my brother. personal favorite. <laughs> you marketed the property for three months. You put it under contract. You put it on social media, e-blast. You had beauty pageants. You did tours. You went under contract. Said, now under contract. Finally, the deal closes. It even got extended twice because of financing. Then you send out that just sold email. Do you ever get this? You never told me about this deal. Why don't you ever tell me about them? <laughs> I don't know what else I can do. If you were in right. China, you saw this deal for sale. Yes. And what happens is they say, oh, you know, I get so many deals across my table. You know, I must not have seen it. You should have called me. And what, what buyers don't understand is, is there's no way we can call 8,000 people. I mean, that's why we do email blasts and social media blasts and sometimes mailings. And we, you know, we cover as much basis as we can. There's no way we can give personal calls to make sure they saw our email instead of the other 300 the emails they got. So now that was part of number two, right? So now we're going to that number was, three. That was, that, was, that was a bonus. Bonus for number bonus two. Bonus hate point. I like Just it. Just like adding, we're doing extra value right here. Yes, yeah. Well, and so going back to number two on your 2A, let's call it. So I always tell investors, man, like you've got to offer to where 
when you lose, you think the guy who won it is an idiot because you can't figure out how they paid that much. And if you have regret, you did it wrong because you only have regret if you didn't go all out. Yes. I go, are you going to be able to sleep or know that it was you are good with not winning this? That if you're making your offer and you're going to go look back and be like, oh, if I had just gone up a hundred grand, I could have had it. I should have done it. If you're going to be mad at yourself, you do it. I'm like a psychologist. I want people to have a happy life and be able to sleep. That's right. What you got for number three? Number three, it seems like sometimes our business, there's amnesia. People forget things. You just can't remember. You don't know yeah. what happens. You forget that, oh, that's right. We did have a soil report that said there was a sinkhole behind the building. <laughs> you know, you just need these things. Sometimes so when you're you working forget. with sellers, you mean, yeah, right. Yes, that would be the seller side. <laughs> and then the buyers, you know, they forget that, the partner that they sent the proof of funds from, he wasn't actually interested in that building. Oh my God. You don't forget, you know, just minor details. I don't know what it is. It's like amnesia sometimes kicks in. And that is just, especially when you know it's something that's vital to the deal. Especially when you're already like, under contract. On. We all know this is what's going to come on. Yes. Buyers are going to uncover things, number one. Number two, you know, especially when you're already under contract and you then you remember something that was key to the deal. Yes. That's really tough. And you and I are talking before we started recording. I think part of it is, especially when someone owns something so long, you know, you have something 10, 15, 20 years, you know, you forget about the easement or the, you know, like you were saying, something that runs through the middle of the building, you know, whatever it, it happens. Is. All right. What you got for number four? If you go and you're in a slow motion film, you are in the wrong business. If you want to drive a broker nuts, then make sure you go extra slow oh. and take every second of a deal. Just <laughs> this is not the game. Pick up the pace. If you know you need a survey, order it. If you know you need appraisal, order it. Third party reports order them. This is not the time to waste, especially right now, man, they are taking longer than I've ever seen. Right. Yes. And then guess what? That means you as a buyer need to get out your checkbook and pay the extra expediting fee that yep. is available. You know, the other thing, Joe, is not just the power of the speed is that the seller who also owns six other assets you could buy and the broker is watching you be slow. And why would they ever want to do another deal with you again? This is the sarcastic version, but the whole point of this is to walk out as a buyer and take these five things and do a significantly better job and improve your reputation in the marketplace because right. everybody knows how you execute. Like they're going to see it over and over and it's going to get around, especially in central Florida. Like this is not a huge market. You're not New York. We're not in California where people come and go all the time. Maybe somebody comes in every now and then does one deal, but the vast majority, you get around the same people and you see them over and over and yeah. everyone has a reputation. If you're moving slow on deals when you should be moving fast, that you get a reputation. And oftentimes these folks never know why they don't get chosen again, because oftentimes brokers and sellers don't say to them, hey, by the way, the reason you lost that multiple offer bid was because you sucked. At yeah. that last deal, you were too slow. You did that. You did that. You usually don't get that kind of feedback. You just got to know, like, pick yeah. up the pace. It's time pick up to the pace. This, you know, the tortoise and the hare, and the tortoise eventually wins. Yeah. This one, you got to run. The hare wins. <laughs> the every hare wins. Time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, man. What's the fifth and final thing you hate? Help us out. Like we've been working hard. We're struggling. This barely hitting our IRR. We're barely making it. Come on. There is number one on the list. I agree. And I actually was just on a podcast a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things I said was, if any portion of a broker's fee is the deal maker or breaker, you should never be buying this damn deal. Because, you know, if a broker's fee, let's say, depending on anywhere from a million dollar deal to an $80 million deal is from 1% to 6%. Hey, you know, whoa, 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 whoa. 10%. Come on. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I meant 10%. I meant 10%. <laughs> if any portion of those fees, when you think about the actual dollar figure is a determining factor, you're doing something wrong. The reality is, is that it just shows the character of someone. What they really, what they're really saying is, is I don't like the deal I'm getting. I want you to feel pain too. That's yeah, some of I it. See, I think it's, yeah. And some people, they just can't help themselves. There's money out there and they're going to try and get it no matter right. what it is. Just they can't 
absolutely cannot help themselves. My favorite <laughs> is the retrade and they come back and add all oh, of this and that, and this is wrong that I need a hundred grand. My favorite, this is my favorite response, text message. Seller said, no, please cancel. And I'll have Nikki send them a, a cancellation. I'm so sorry yeah. this deal didn't work out. Please sign. Because there's nine guys behind you. Let's, uh, let's get this going. Yeah. Like we got, like, I got something else ready to go. Like, I, I totally understand. I'm sorry. It didn't work out for you. No problem. Like, huh? No, but he's supposed <laughs> to, he's supposed to come back. I love your top five. I agree with every single one of them, brother. Thank you so I much. I got 20 for, more. <laughs> I, I know. I know. We, we could seriously do this all day long. We've experienced so many different iterations, but I think if you can avoid these top five, it definitely gets you down the road some. If you avoid these top five and other ones, you can be at a elite level investors who dominate. If you haven't checked out Bo's book, you should. Yeah. He's got some excellent stuff in there where it's on your screen right over there. Excellent. Discuss exactly this. And, and the point of this is we want buyers and sellers, we want them to do profitable deals. We're in this market a long, I've been here a long time, Bo's been here a long time. And the intention is for everyone to walk away with the best possible investments that suit their needs and fit them. And this is how to execute at an elite level. So the next time you're in the game, you get the best possible look. Beautifully said. I'm going to put all the information about how to reach Joe, contact Joe, follow Joe. He is all over the place in every corner of multifamily you can think of. So go in the description down below. You definitely need to subscribe to him and see what he's doing. He's, he's putting out phenomenal information. 100units.com. Thanks for watching. Oh, man, we're going every day. Thanks, Bo. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet.